Saturday morning. Welcome to This Week in Dioramas. I am your host, Tech Chucker. Now, if you aren't familiar with how this show operates, every week I go through Instagram looking for the coolest looking dioramas, and I showcase them right here on the show. Now, if you'd like to be showcased in a future episode, all you need to do is upload your diorama pictures to Instagram and tag them with the hashtag This Week in Dioramas. With that said, we are coming to the end of season two. Can you believe it? It is December now, and that means that we have this episode and next week's episode, and then season two is over, and then we have the Grand Championship coming up. So, if you are still hoping that you might have another chance at getting into that top five, get your dioramas in, and you know what? For the next episode, why don't you also, including the tag, of This Week in Dioramas, go ahead and tag me as well directly. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier to find. It's still a little hard because it, it gets lost in my feed, but um, that just gives you a better chance of me seeing it and maybe I'll miss a few less dioramas because it just kills me. The fact that uh, you know Instagram has taken that search capability away for right now and it makes it so much harder to put this showcase together, but I think I have done a pretty good job of finding some really awesome dioramas, and that's all because of you guys. You guys have done some amazing work throughout this year. We we surpassed 10,000 posts to the hashtag, which is pretty darn awesome. I, I never would have thought that over you know two years ago when I started this show that there would be upwards of 10,000 posts on a hashtag that I started. So thank you to all of you for that. Make sure you go join the Diorama HQ Facebook group. Uh, that's a group that I created where uh, Diorama creators, Diorama enthusiasts, people that are interested in this craft can share your showcases, your uh, works in progress, and more importantly is to be able to share ideas, share knowledge. That's something that I really want people to feel comfortable asking questions. There's no dumb question. The only dumb question is the question that's not asked. And I know that's cliche, but it's true. Uh, so I want it to be a welcoming environment for anybody, especially those that are beginners, but I want you advanced people in there as well so that you can give the advisement to some of the people that are just getting started. And uh, you know, there's a lot of groups out there. This one, I hope we can make unique and we can make it a tight-knit group of people. So go check out Diorama HQ on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. We got one or two other things to talk about. First things first is go check out Nate's Toys and Collectibles on Facebook. Follow his page. He is a great guy and he is a great resource for action figures that you need. Need. So check him out, Nate's Toys and Collectibles on Facebook. Uh, he has hooked me up how many times with awesome action figures, uh, especially watch for when he does some uh, uh, stock clearances so that he can clear out his house. He's got a lot of stuff sometimes that he just needs to get moving. So check him out, Nate's Toys and Collectibles. And then the last thing that we need to talk about is the Grand Championship, which is coming at the end of this year, which we're already at the end of the year. It's coming in the next couple of weeks, and that means next week's episode, December 12th, is the final showcase of season two. So get your dioramas posted before then if you want another chance into that top five. But what we're gonna do, if you're not familiar with how I did last year's Grand Championship, we're gonna do the same basic thing. We've got one winner, one winner to rule them all, to have all of the bragging rights to say, I 
won the grand championship of This Week in Dioramas season two. So how this is gonna operate is every single winner from every single episode, we're upwards of around 40 some episodes, that means 40 some winners, will be put into a giant vote. One vote, you'll get like one week to get your vote in for your favorite and whoever comes out with the most votes will win. And what are they gonna win? Well. I put out a call to uh, folks if they were interested in providing a prize, sponsoring that prize, and we've got a couple of people that answered that call. I am so thankful and so appreciative of Nimai Customs. You've seen him showcased several times on the show. He is offering up a custom diorama that he has made just for the show, for the prize, and I couldn't be more grateful and I couldn't be more stoked that he is doing this. And we also have coming from Mighty Kane an offer of a, and I had made a mistake last time when I talked about these, I thought they were 3D printed. They are actually molded and it is a molded space diorama piece that he is offering up. And the cool thing, and we, we kind of chatted about this a bit, was uh, he's going to offer it up unpainted and uh, we both thought that that would be a good idea because you guys are artists. Make it your own. So you'll get that as a prize to be able to uh, paint it up however you like. So there may be some uh, caveats to this depending on where the winner lives. So if you live in the United States, you will be getting the Nimai Custom Prize. Uh, I gotta double check to make sure that um, Mighty Kane is shipping both internationally and to the United States. He lives not in the US. So at a bare minimum, not everything has been fully set with the prize, but at a minimum, the US winner will get the custom diorama from Namai and international will get the prize from Mighty Kane. Now Mighty Kane might be willing to send it to the US as well. Uh, I'm also going to throw in some 3D printed items that I have designed myself. I too am going to make them most likely unpainted so that you have the choice of you know, doing what you want with it. So that might not get shipped internationally from me. We'll just kind of work it out, but we do have prizes. You've seen the pictures. It is super cool and I'm so grateful and I'm so excited. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss when the announcement for the vote being opened is made. So we've got all of the uh, house cleaning stuff done. We need to do one last thing. We need to reveal the winner of last week's fan vote. And your winner is the Mandalorian Dial by Wakas Bazaar. Congratulations, you are now entered into that grand championship coming in the next couple of weeks. Make sure you stay tuned until the end of this episode where you'll get another chance to vote for your favorite on the community tab on my channel. That is good. That is good stuff. Have you ever actually tried physically slurping your coffee like that for that long? It takes talent. Talent that I think you'll find if you practice, you might be able to be as good as me. All right, let's jump right on into this showcase. And as always, no cuts, because that is what you expect. That is what you demand of this show. Uh, your silence on requesting it, it speaks volumes so that I know that's what you want and expect. So there will be no cuts. Let's jump right on into this with Cremated Plastics Friends Commission Diorama. And this thing is spectacular. It is so good. I mean, wow. It looks just like the show. I mean, wow, you have really outdone yourself on this one. It is so detailed looking and so realistic looking. I just can't get over how amazing of a job you did. I love it and I love this beam 
that really brings it together and gives it that depth. Uh, even though you don't have a full on ceiling as far as I can tell, it still really adds to the piece. The colors, I mean, you really match those colors so, so well. I just am so impressed with this piece. Uh, yeah, I just I can't see anything more about this. You really have nailed it. So awesome job on a really cool piece. Very, very nostalgia inducing. So great job. Next, coming from El Chombo NYC. This is a work in progress, but I wanted to uh, showcase it just in case I, you know, miss it uh, in the, in the feed. This is really cool. He always does amazing work. This is a Christmas gift, so keep it on the DL if uh, his, um, I believe it's his father-in-law, his, okay, for his son's father-in-law. Okay, so hopefully they don't know if this is a secret. This is pretty darn awesome looking. It's already turned out really great. Uh, if you're not familiar with El Chambo, he does have a YouTube channel, so go check him out. I will have a link in the description below, as long as I remember. Sometimes I forget to post those links, uh, so let me know if I did forget. Um, but this is super cool, and what he does a lot of the times, uh, not every time, but he uses clocks as the base, and he pulls out the innards and whatnot, and it's a really cool idea, and I, I just love the creativity coming from Mr. El Chombo NYC, so I can't wait to see what this thing is going to look like when it is completed. It already looks awesome. Next, coming from Oak Hill Studios, this is a really impressive piece. The paintwork on here is very, very nice. Uh, so what do we got here? Start to, to the paint and weathering application on Medieval Pulley. Uh, let me know what you think. I think this looks awesome. I really think it looks great. The griminess, the weathering on here, the chain looks awesome. It just looks really, really impressive. You've done a great job. I love seeing your posts. Uh, it is just super fun, so great job. This next one's coming from Lionheart Dioramas. I I'm going to note, uh, in this episode, there are a fair number of creations that were not tagged, and I did that on purpose because we're coming up towards the end of the season and I wanted to make sure those that I didn't necessarily recognize the name that then I'll send out a note so that they're aware of the show and then they can see the Grand Championship. This is one that I certainly would have put in my top five if it was tagged, but because I don't know if people are aware of the show. It doesn't make sense to put people into a top five where then they could potentially be in the Grand Championship vote, win, and having never known about the show. So that's kind of the reason for the hashtagging and why some people don't show up even though they have really amazing work. And this is one of those. This is from Lionheart Diorama. Can't can't remember if I already said this or not, but this thing is really impressive. It is a Dragon Ball Z themed diorama and it is just epic. I love the sculpt of all of the stonework. You've got so many different layers for where you could, you know, post, post, pose your figures. I mean, it is so cool and look how big it is. It's 38 inches tall up to the top there. That is over three feet tall. That is massive. And then it's 32 inches uh, wide, 26 inches deep. This thing is super cool. Removable trees and top. This is absolutely stunning and it is for sale. So if this is something that you have to have in your collection, by all means, hit them up. I hope that uh, you can make a great deal with them if it hasn't already been sold because I am just so freaking impressed with this thing. You throw in a really cool background, even if it's just a blue background or whatever, and this thing is going to pop so well. These trees look awesome. That waterfall is stunning looking. Like it, it gives that cartoony look, but then you've got some really nice detail with the water splash effect down here. I mean, this is just, this is stunning. Wow. Next, coming from Mega Custom Dios, this is a custom Marvel Legends Apocalypse Throne Diorama, and I really like this piece. Now, I believe this is a video. Let's see if it'll play. There we go. 
This is really cool. I love the little runes that you've carved into there. That looks awesome. The the actual throne itself, you got a little light that's got a little bit of flicker underneath, which is awesome. You've got the A sculpted in here. There's a lot of really great stuff sculpted in here. And then the paintwork also is really impressive looking. You've done a great job weathering. You can see little bits of, of kind of rusty look that's strewn throughout. It is very impressive. I really dig this piece and look at that. That is the money shot right there. That looks so good. You really nailed this piece. And the fact that it fits uh, apocalypse so well look at that that is amazing you guys all of you have really stepped it up and this one by far is is one of my favorite dioramas I I don't know I just love it so much this next one's coming from model bow one something or other I'm not sure I uh, this one was another one that was not tagged. It is so unique. This is a scratch built model of a, a Caterpillar D11T. Now I'm not certain if it is uh, painted, uh, because if, if you're not aware, not all Caterpillar uh, machines are yellow, but um, it looks like it might already be somewhat painted because there's little bits of weathering it looks like on there. This thing is awesome looking and they're saying here no printing so no 3d printing no CAD none of that This thing is amazing this there's so much detail in here It looks like it could practically be functional and this is just so impressive So, you know, this is dioramas the show but I've I've brought in vehicles many times throughout the uh, the last two seasons so if you are a custom uh, vehicle painter or whatever that might be by all means use the hashtag this is one that was not tagged but i wanted to share it because it is so incredibly impressive the talent level on here to build this from scratch it looks so realistic so awesome job next coming from figures and photography this is a 112 scale hangman's hill cemetery dio and i just like this uh, they they their work is very cleanly done. They they do a great job of packaging their dioramas into something that's very aesthetically pleasing. And again, this is one that is very aesthetically pleasing. I love the way that you've kind of framed this in, but you've kind of cut a little bit out here. And you could certainly, depending on what you're putting this thing on, you could have a little bit more underneath there or leave it just the way that it is and it looks great. Add a couple of figures on here and this thing Thing is gonna look so good on a shelf I love the paintwork I love the grass that you've got on here it just looks really really good so awesome job and yet again another awesome piece this next one's coming from our little our uh, our little creations remember we're not cutting because you guys want that <laughs> I know you die you guys don't care um, this is another one that I am new to. I'm not familiar with this uh, creator, but I really like your work. So if you do wind up watching this, I just kudos for this really, really cool piece. I went through some of your profile and I saw your work is really awesome. I am very impressed with this. I love the fact that you got a little light in there that adds to the depth. But what's even cooler is, so you got this framed in, but your tree comes out. So it's, it's at an angle, you can see the little angle there. So this is not just straight up, it's kind of at almost like a 45 degree. The house looks awesome, the paintwork on here is so cool. So I hope that we will see more from you in the future uh, because your work is very impressive. Uh, yeah, that's I, look how small it is, that's the quarter. Dang, that's awesome. Next is coming from uh, Vilden Houseback. Don't think I said that right at all. Again, another uh, new user being showcased. Hopefully you will watch this and uh, become a fan of the show because I am a fan of your work. This is super cool, this diorama. Another one that I went through your profile and saw a bunch of really cool work on here and I was really impressed with all of the uh, paintings that you've got up on the wall, the realism, the lighting that you have. It is just super cool. I love this concept of a, a diorama that 
comes from this kind of style of house and I just I just really like it and I love all the uh, props that you've got strewn throughout here with all the books and whatnot it is super cool so I really enjoy this kind of work I hope that you will uh, enjoy this show and uh, hopefully you will share more of your work with us uh, using that hashtag so here is the actual piece and that is so cool Next up, coming from The Real Dallas James. So technically, this is not his work, and uh, we'll just read this out. So he's saying, who wants to 3D print this for him? It is a fully interactive working Stargate, complete with a DHD dial home device. The Stargate ring spins and places the dialed symbol on the correct chevron as the traveler is inputting the address by using the DHD. All the seven chevrons move and light up, blah, blah, blah. So this is something that you can find the uh, STL files. So if you're not familiar with uh, 3D printing, uh, the files that you use are oftentimes STL files, and then you have to you know, slice them and print it off. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of files that you have to print off, but this is really cool. And look at that, they've got action in there. I'm certain that uh, with whatever link they have to this piece, they've got uh, hopefully links to all the electronics and whatnot that you would need to purchase to go along with it. So if this is something that you are willing to 3D print for the real Dallas James, uh, hit them up uh, because, I mean, this is just, this is spectacular, this piece, I love it. Next up, coming from Simon Family Farms, I am a sucker for the farm dioramas, and I love these huge, like, tabletop sort of dioramas, uh, similar to the uh, railroad HO scale, all of that stuff. I love it all. We are not just for action figures necessarily, so uh, if you are new to the show and maybe you don't do the action figure stuff, but you do stuff like this, by all means, share it with us, tag it, uh, because I am a fan of most all genres of this kind of art, and I just love the way that this looks. Just look at the detail here. You've got the little uh, tire tracks of the path. Obviously, they've been using that as an informal path to kind of save time and get from the barns. It's just, this is farm living. Seeing the tufts, uh, the, the realism of this grass, it's not all just one uniform color of green, it's not one uniform length or density, and you've really nailed it. It just looks so realistic. This looks like if you had real sunlight uh, lighting this thing up and you took a shot, like a drone shot, it, it would look, people wouldn't know that this was not real, and I am just so impressed. Next, coming from Rhino Dioramas, make sure you hit them up on rhinodioramas.com. Uh, they do 3D printing, so maybe he'll uh, hit up uh, the real uh, for that uh, Stargate. Um, but he also does dioramas, and he sells those dioramas. And this one really impressed me. This is uh, I'm just gonna call it the di uh, the DC Ladies diorama. Uh, it is super cool. His paintwork is always so good. He's got such great detail throughout, and then always having really cool props and whatnot to finish off his dioramas. He's very good at being able to compose these dioramas into something very impressive. So awesome job to Rhino Dioramas. And again, make sure you're following him. If you need 3D printed stuff, he is your guy. Next up, coming from the Shadow Gallery 718, this piece really struck me. I really enjoy this. You're, you're mixing multiple scales of action figures, and I just love it. This is so cool. He's calling it Welcome to the Forbidden Planet, uh, the New York City mecca for comic books and what have you. We've got Stan Lee up here. I just love all the detail with the stickers or the uh, the, the logos and whatnot that are up on the windows. The paintwork is clean. It looks awesome. I just think you did a great job. And then you've got a I'm not certain if this is, let's let's go into the pictures to see if that is, there's gotta be a print off, but then also 
some actual stuff in there. So you've created some real great depth with this piece and some uh, perspective sort of uh, tomfoolery, if you will. And this is just so cool. Look at all that stuff. That is so fun. A lot of work and time went into putting this thing together and it is such a great looking piece. So awesome job. Next, coming from Nathaniel James 01. Uh, Go check him out. He does a lot of really cool stuff, very Star Wars centric. And this piece really impressed me. Uh, I gotta know if this is um, sculpted that you did or if this is something that you found naturally out in the wild and you uh, are putting it into your diorama because it really looks natural and organic. The paint on here, if this is paint, uh, it just looks so, so impressive. So I gotta know a little bit more about this if you are watching the episode. Maybe uh, leave us a comment is this scratch built or is the, does this have some natural uh, pieces to it like the tree and what have you now this this watery effect here that is really cool what did you use to get that watery effect I've seen different uh, um, uh, chemicals I guess that you can use or materials that you can use to get that kind of glossy wet effect so I would like to know that I've got two questions for you answer them please Next is coming from Diorama Boy, and this is yet again another awesome diorama. He always does great stuff, and this one really struck me because of the stairway going up into who knows what it's going into. Uh, this is uh, probably some sort of a subway station or whatever, and I am really impressed. This paintwork is always so good, but look at this floor. That looks so realistic. I mean, it really looks like this is just something you took a picture of out in the real world. And that is what impresses me day in, day out from all of you guys is your skill set to be able to bring things to life. And I really am impressed with this. Just look at the detail, the, the graffiti on here, the paintwork. It is really impressive. So awesome job as always to Diorama Boy. This next one is coming from the internet, if it will load. There we go, Johnny Simpleton. Good to see some work coming from you again. Done and done with this diorama. He's calling it the collectors. They're sucking the life out of what gives them life. This is really cool. If you're not familiar with Johnny Simpleton, go familiarize yourself with his work. It is so creative. It is always different thinking outside of the box. And he does things from scratch. And from what I recall, he's really only been doing this for about a year or so. And that is really impressive to be able to pick up these paint skills within a year. I have not done that and I've been working on dioramas for more than a year. This is so cool. I just love the detail, the organic feel of it. There's so many different colors and they all come together. It's weathered so well. There's just so many things going on here and that's what things in real life are is there's just tons of stuff in the world. I mean, look at the detail here. You've got like this little, uh, I don't know what this would be called, but then it's wrapped wrapping this pipe and then that's holding up the floor but not all of the floor is there i mean just so much creativity going into putting this piece together and i am always always impressed with your work this next one is coming from the crow's holler this one is really cool and it is very small it is tiny so this is another one that uh, I don't believe they are aware of the show and hopefully you're now aware of the show this is a really creative idea I believe that this is like a little jewelry box see that so imagine this in this size the detail on here that is super cool if you're not familiar this there's, there's a whole genre of photography using these little tiny micro people and there are some amazing photographers that are using these little people in all sorts of different places and I, I've uh, followed a few people who do that kind of artwork and it is amazing it's it's uh, it's definitely been taken over by some really high level photographers that are doing this stuff and it is super cool. So awesome job. I hope we will see some more from you in the future. 
Next, coming from Mr. Leaf C. Beaver. <laughs> uh, two teasers out of the way. This is what he's working, he or she, I shouldn't assume. This is what they are working on, a sump rig and using some new stronghold, well, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is a work in progress. I wanted to showcase it because it's looking really cool and I wanna see it when it's done. So when you are done, please, please tag it with the hashtag this week in dioramas. I would love to see it. I do not wanna miss this because it is looking pretty darn cool and pretty darned big. Next, coming from Larsa the to scenery something i'm sorry okay so this is a bird's eye view of the little french diorama that they made it is an ho scale so 187th scale and this is just cool this is really nice so if you know 187th scale you know our action figures are usually 1 6th scale 1 12th 1 10th so 187th is quite small it's pretty close to matchbox scale i think matchbox is about 186th uh this is really cool. I love the paintwork on here. These trees look awesome, the grass, everything. So again, this is another one that I am hoping that uh, you will share even more work with us in the future. Next, coming from Fernando CR. Uh, this one is a little familiar to me. I can't remember if we've showcased this one before or not, but I figured, you know what? It's really cool. It came up in my feed, so let's talk about it. This is really cool. He does amazing work. It is always so realistic. The paintwork is on point every single time. And if this is new or old, I don't care because it is awesome. It looks so good. I love the little bricks that are, are poking out from the original surface. It just looks so good. Ah, I love it. The little detail with the, with the wire hanging down the uh, uh, graffiti on here the little light inside with the curtains i mean that is attention to detail and i really love it so keep them coming next coming from reco ch again another one of these amazing uh commissions that he has done he has just perfected this uh this style of building that he is putting out and i gotta say Whoever it is that is buying these things, you guys are getting some amazing pieces of art. And just look at the detail on this thing. It is incredible. I would like to know, if you're watching the show, how long does it take from start to finish to make one of these buildings? How long? Is it? Is it a couple of days? Is it a couple of weeks? Is it a month? Is it a couple of hours? Because you keep, you keep spitting them out so quickly and I'm always so impressed with the detail. I mean, this one's got even more detail than the previous ones. I just, I, I'm so impressed. So that's your question to answer. I will, exp your deadline is uh, by next week. <laughs> And then last but not least, coming from Diorama's Clow is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rooftop diorama. It is ready to ship. So if this is something that you are looking for, you better hit them up very quickly because I can't imagine this thing will sit around too long. It is really nice looking. I love the way that you've constructed it. <clears throat> I always like the rooftop dioramas that people make. It's just, it's so iconic and it is, you know, so cool to be able to see everybody's different rendition of a rooftop dio. And this one is really, really well done. I love the pink colors that you used. It does have a bit of a cartoony look so you could use the NECA cartoon turtles with this but it also very much works very very well with the 90s movie turtles and heck you could put a daredevil in there you could put spider-man you could put any other figures that you want you can do whatever the heck you want but what you do need to do is you need to buy it so send them a note if this is something you are interested in I'm very impressed with the construction on this thing I love the detail with the cracks on here. I mean, it's just chock full of awesomeness and goodness and all of that stuff. So great job on yet again, another amazing, amazing looking diorama. Alrighty, we are at the end of another amazing showcase of dioramas. Thank you to everybody who participated, but we aren't quite done yet. We need to reveal my top five and you'll get your chance to vote for your favorite on the community tab on my channel. And my top five are the Friends Dio by Cremated Plastic, the TMNT Rooftop Dio by Dioramas Clow, 
the Apocalypse Throne Dio by Mega Custom Dios, the DC Ladies Dio by Rhino Dioramas, and the Forbidden Planet Dio by the Shadow Gallery 718. Again, make sure you go to the community tab on my channel after you're done watching the show and vote for your favorite and I will reveal the winner next week. Alrighty, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell notification. What are you waiting for? Just join the crew and subscribe, and I will see you next week.